Welcome back to the NLC Division 2 on day 10. It's going to be the fourth game of today. It's going to be Flong versus Domino. They're ready to go into the Champion Select, but so far it has been exciting. It has been blood all over the Summoner's Rift, and this is exactly what we want. Right, Salati? Oh my god, absolutely. Yes, we went into this day today being like, are we going to see blast of the games today? And boy, oh boy, were we not disappointed <laughs> with the games so far. And I'm planning not to be disappointed as we go further because, oh my god, these teams must be looking at each other with the blood in their eyes. And that's what we want to see in them. So what I'm going to do is put the production yet again on a rough spot. And I'm going to ask for that uh, standings. I need the standings before we go any further. There we Oh, he was waiting for me. He's wonderful. <laughs> now. What does this game mean? It's going to be Flong, third place team versus Domino sitting at uh, fifth place team. I mean, they're still struggling to get that one. But if you look at this, they're four and five. If they win this, they become like five and five, which means they'll be able to overtake Raid Gaming mm -hmm. and get really close to Light Side as well because they lost today, which means they're five and five. So they can jump from like undeciding fifth place to almost fourth, third place. This is a really good victory for Domino Esports, but also this could be the game that would put Flong Esports tied up with Natives because Natives lost today versus Monster Gaming and they're 7-3. So if Flong wins today, it's going to be 7-3 Flong. So jumping from the third place to the second place. Obviously, this is standings on uh, week five. We still have a long time to go, but I always want to give you the heads up of what this game means as a viewer so you can understand what the pressure is behind on the Rift. And thank you very much for that, because definitely the <laughs> pressure is very high for both of these teams. The stakes are super high for both. Both of them will be able to benefit so nicely from winning this game, which basically means that losing this game is not an option for either of them. But as it happens, there is only going to be one winner this time, as always. The question is who it's going to be. I can't wait to see what Rocket is going to bring to us. The usual question that we keep asking ourselves today throughout the, all, all the games that we have, Zeri and Gwen, are they going to be bent out? Because I definitely think they will. I mean, they gotta be. They gotta be. They Gwen, because Gwen is immune. Although Gwen is losing a little bit of power on the top side due to the rise up of all breakers. So if Gwen is not capable of building the whole breakers, so this is, uh, this is allowing... Uh, other top planners to build something interesting like the Graves being building up the Hellbreaker oh, yes. versus the Gwen so that could happen there is a way to deal with the Gwen but you don't want to give the chance for the Gwen to shine in this game if he gets if she gets the lead there's no Hellbreaker that is going to save you so Twisted Fight the usual let's see if Thresh is going to be picked out as well we've seen a few Jinx bans Zeri is out of the equation get her get away Yes, exactly. I, I agree with you about Jinx's point. She is probably going to be either bent out or picked because she is such a strong first pick if you think about it. But then I also want to see some action throughout the jungle because something we haven't seen today, for example, is something like Diana in the jungle. She's losing her positions a little bit versus the beginning of this season, but she is still a very reliable source of control and damage when it comes to the team fight. And just a good jungler in general too, so it could be an interesting option for either of the teams. Okay, Riven, obviously, Ripped yeah. is not allowed to take this one, especially because you can build the whole breaker on the Riven. You want to go for other items, but if you build that, you don't want a 1v1 a, a Riven with a with a whole breaker. It's going oh to be Seraphine removed as well. I know you kind of like this champion. I know. There's some similarity. The hair, I've seen the cosplay. I search who I'm casting with, so I'm just going to say that. Gwen is going to be removed as well. The last one, allowing... Jinx is available, but so is a failure, so it's going to be priority for the Karma. Uh-huh, Karma actually going slight of a flex picture again, but many other interesting options they can either accompany her or be taken against her. Loving that Camille pick, possibly. Uh, wonder what could be going for the top lane for Domino, and I really want to see something like Gna, for example, because of how interesting of a champion he is and how much he allows the team to play around him. Looking at the Jinx, looking at this Jinx. Exactly. Is she going to be accompanied by Lulu or is she going to go with something more chunky chunky to support her versus the enemy team on the bottom and versus the possible ganks because you want to stop that Jinx? Could be Nautilus, works very nice with Jinx. Could be something like Leona, for example. Pretty much the same logic here. Or again, could be Lulu. Jinx and Lulu, we have seen this 
quite some time, at least for us in Ultra Liga, and it really works miraculously because Jinx stays alive and is Thresh! I love it! I was thinking about that Thresh is available. This could be a really good get out of jail free card for the Jinx yes. if you misplace herself. If you're going to play versus the Karma as well, okay, you got the movement speed, but if there's a hook, that's more than enough to secure the kill because you get the hook, you get the flail, you get the chompers, everything is aligned and no one is going anywhere. So if Aphelios is left alone on the bot side without his pair, it's a really good pair between the Thresh and the Aphelios, but it's going to be Nautilus and the Aphelios, which means they reveal that this Karma is a flex. And it's no longer a flex, you either get it on the top side or you can be a little bit crazy and bring it to the middle. Yeah, especially with this Seraphine ban coming from Domino Esports, you could actually bring this uh, Kalma to the mid lane and try to build her up as just a damage dealer, not as a second support as we usually see her. Um, I would not be surprised this is something like Syndra yet again appearing on the mid lane, maybe standing against this Kalma because it could be a very interesting matchup. Both of them could be going around the map, trying to roam a little bit, help the lanes. But no, it's not going to be an option anymore, I'm afraid. Something like Victor, though, is still available. Uh, it, would it be boring? Maybe a little bit. Would it work? Absolutely. There's something that we, we, we can talk about just lightly. It's the fact that a failure can go into the mid lane. Yesterday, we saw MNS from JDXL picking mm -hmm. the failures on the mid lane. I gotta say... It didn't work the way I thought it was going to work. It, it's a really good pick. It's a really good pick. If you are capable of switching the weapons as, as you see fit, if you want to push, if you want to get the stun, if the root, if you want to get the sustain, it's really good. It could be something, so don't take the possibility away from this if failures okay. going mid. It's not only on the NLC, by the way. We've seen the failures mid on other leagues as well. So put it out on your mind, but... 99.9% .9 in my opinion is going to the bot side. I yeah. just want to point out there's a the slim possibility. chance. Yeah, it could be rather interesting to see it happening, but I stand with you here. Most probably we're not going to see it this time, unfortunately. Still, a lot of possibilities here to try to go around the picks. We haven't touched that Viego pick for the jungle, and something we also need to touch is another bird appearing yet again on the Summoner's Rift. Azir for the mid lane, maybe standing against that comma, maybe not. We are yet still to see how it's going to work for the Mino Esports. But in general, we need more picks. We need more picks, please. It's more about that control on the top. And if you take away this Gragas, this means that nah, don't do it. If you take away <laughs> if you take away this Gragas, it means that you can build something different. You can even go for the Nar as well. So if you bring the Azir alongside with the Nar, you can do something funny and use his ultimate against the wall of Azir. And everybody <gasps> yeah. will just be confused and stunned. And it's a mess. This could be a really, really good composition from Flung. Nobody's expecting that. But this is going to be Trundle, and they finally have to reveal where this Karma is going to be placed. Okay! Okay, we have a lot to talk about, and I'm going to give this to you, putting you on the spot. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's not fair. Okay, that's actually fair. But what do oh we God. have going on? I mean, action. Something that I desperately wanted to see on the Summoner's Reef, because in Ultra League, we never got a chance to see the action action on the top lane. But here, finally, we have the chance... But with him or without him already, the composition for the main esports looks rather interesting with a lot of possibilities to make sure that the front lane leaves and the back lane does the damage and also leaves in case there is an invade, in an engage rather from the flung. Which there are possibilities. Again, something you touched about the rise, but this time being accompanied by Fiora opens up for interesting things here because you already have two duelists on the flung esports uh, team. Which means that single targets on Domino Esports are not going to feel safe at any moment in the game. And mostly looking at this Aphelius, he would need to stick either to Karma or to Nautilus. He's in a good position in terms of he has two supports in this game, so he can rather feel safe most of the times, especially when it comes to the team vice, because Karma most likely will try to be around him and just the team in general to make sure she props the uh, shields with the ultimate on as many people as possible, because they will need any sustain they can get in this situation. But still, two duelists coming onto you in the mid to late game, it could be just so devastating. Action top is not something that I want to see. I hate him, but it really? worked 
wonders. I, I'm okay, a top planner. Yeah. I'm done with suffering, okay? <laughs> I'm done with the actions, with the enchanters, with the hullbreakers. I want something where I can show my skill and not being punished and slapped around on the line. Oh. But uh, <laughs> action makes so much sense. But then you have the mm -hmm. Fiora. This this could be like really good for the action or really, really bad if Fiora is capable of getting some sort of a lead. So if the junglers come into the top side and if they commit like at least a kill or a flash or something like that for either of them, this could do or, or just die for that lane. Top mm -hmm. lane is really volatile as I'm watching between the Fiora and Akshan. And I don't know if you listen to this, you have the sweet sound of the Summoner's Rift on the background, which means yes. welcome back to the fourth game of the day. We have the bird's eye of the Rift and we got Errol on the Azir as well. So another bird for you guys as I'm going to see Ripped with the long sword, three pots as well, and I think he's running bone plate as well. Mm, the birds, the bird eye view on the bird. I love it. <laughs> but what I also love is your point about the top lane being volatile, and I expect to see a lot of attention from the junglish for this top lane because he cannot just leave it alone to its own means, to its own business. You really need to do something about it because if you just leave it there and pretend like the top lane doesn't exist at all, it can later play out for you in the in the mid game and the team fights not very nicely regardless of what side we're talking about going to be a slow start yet again looking mm -hmm. at to see if there's any other keystone that is going to pop up not much it's going to be the press the attack on the top side and the jungle as well as expected so trundle will try to get shafty or even Vang vangstead that's the way I should pronounce it. I got it, guys. I got it. I got it. Yay! You better help me on the before the game. Because I don't have a lot of pixels for me. So <laughs> I got to make do. So if uh, this press the attack is procced either by Ripped or Sidon, it's going to be really hard to deal with if you're Vangsted in the Fiora. Press the attack amplifies the damage. Everybody deals to the target. So Ripped or Sidon will try to proc it as fast as possible and then commit to the kill. So Vangstead will probably be forced to flash if there's any assistance from the jungler. He's going to uh, leash out the jungler. I don't know if it's going to be a sneaky gank by Shafti, allowing him to go for the red, the crocs, and then instantly into the line. That's a weak point. That's a perfect one. That's a lot of percentage. That's a lot of damage in general, just flying around the top lane. Um... But yes, talking about Vonsta, just very quickly here, just touching up on your point with the runes. Him going with a grasp of the Undying seems like maybe not, not the absolutely perfect choice here, but if you think about it, he's just building up a exactly to survive that possible immediate damage coming from the top lane, especially if it's accompanied with a jungle full of gang. Is to survive there to try to get this additional boon of health. And live for as long as possible because as Fiora you want to live and then you want to jump in Oof. and build it. Whoa, the damage that Rift is showing us, my goodness! That's a lot of damage. <gasps> there you go, oh, we no. talked about the early ganks. It's going to be the Ice Pillar, it's not enough. Bangstead is capable of sustaining himself, has the teleport available. If only Rift waited one second, Sidon would be able to get into the top side and that would be... A First blood in favor of action. The wave is going to collapse, but thankfully the teleport is there to help Vangstead. But look at this. We talk about the timers of the teleports often on the NLC Division 1, and this is really bad for Vangstead because he went back, he had nothing, and he was forced to buy refillable potion. Mm -hmm. He's not. Oh, he missed the Siege minion. That is a lot of gold that is going to be missed. He missed another minion. Mental. He's mental breaking. He has to take these waves in order to come back because he just used the teleport for one of the smallest items that he can get and he's getting heavily poked underneath the turret and Rift still hasn't gone back. So he can just push another wave, go back and uh, probably buy some boots and come in with his W on the going rogue if he needs to. Mm -hmm. He also paid with quite a lot of minions in the end as we could see, but in general from the very beginning Rift was getting a strong lead when it comes to the CS department. You can see why, but also it pays off for Fiora, who really wants to get the early farm as much of it as possible. And it's not exactly happening for you, and she's oh. not having to, but now she's having the damage there. And we had the first blood in the meantime? Oh, yes, we did. Okay, can we see what happened there? A lot of summoners were used on the bot side yeah. in favor of Domino. Look, four summoner spell being burned by Chris, and then, then, so something heavy happened, probably a flash engage from Nautilus. And then the follow-up by Chris. 
I would like to see what the weapons are and why he was able to get the display. Okay, reply on the bot side. What happened, guys? Oh, you're pushed versus the Nautilus. Yeah, there we go. Flash engage, probably. Not even the flash. Not even the flash. Not even needed just yet. Oh my god, already going so low here. Uh, becoming the Nicely done. That is the weapon management uh, that Nymeta and Initialize are always talking about. Seriously, you cannot shut them up with this. But the weapon management of uh, Aphelios is really important. And the Calibrum mm -hmm. right there was the deciding factor to get that kill. Yes, definitely. And also the fact that Nautilus is always there prepared to go on to you. And if you don't manage to get on the land and thrash away quickly enough to the safety, you are pretty much stuck there and it just opens the opportunity for the minion to deal with you immediately. Exactly what happens back there with his first blood. So far there's not that big lead in favor of Domino. It's only 500 gold, so it means it's probably that first blood. Fiora was capable of getting back. Oh, Ufed needs to run away. It's going to be thrashed, locked in. Flashes away, death sentence goes just a little bit wide as everything is used. So four members on the bot side. Karma rotates by herself on her foot so she doesn't waste anything. And Gufen now has to push as fast as possible to reset the wave if he wants to go back safely or even just reset the wave at all. Mm -hmm, exactly. And then now that we have so much action on the bot lane, there is also the moment to think about that first dragon that is already available in the summoner's reach because you might want to secure it and now having some advantage actually surprising on the bot lane, you can try and go for it. If you are something like Viego, for example, jumping around it, maybe trying to secure the exactly secure the vision around it and go for it directly. Or will you Shakti? Or will you rather go clear the vision? Exactly. Thank you very much. If they get a spot of Trundle, okay, they found the Trundle. Sidon wants to take this kill. The Ignite has been procced. Immediately uses the ultimate. The Ignite is burning. And even though the Grand Challenge is used, there's no challenge there. As Rift is going to take the kill with come up and ace. Mm -hmm. No time to prop the Grand Challenge anymore. If you're that low and the dead Trundle is already that close to you. No time to do anything about it and get back the health for yourself. Even if you manage to prop it down, would he have time still to do something about it to get the health back good question but regardless we didn't have the chance to see it he died on the top lane giving action not the kill actually just an assist but still it is some advantage for them and an advantage from trundle who is already running something like shin on him so far seven minutes and two kills coming in fast for domino meanwhile on the other side it's flong again the team that is on the lead in terms of standings falling short on the game now the Sheen has been bought by Sidon, so in terms of damage, that is a huge spike for him. Mm -hmm. I know he still has a little bit of damage, uh, a little bit of gold if he decides to go back and buy anything else. Obviously, I, I think he wants to clear as much as he can in terms of oh, 900 gold, there we go. But also Viego just countering the jungle away. So Sidon will lose a little bit of time going from the Wolves to the Raptors, then to the buff as well to find nothing at all. Shafty will leave that little, little raptor just to say, I was Aww. here. Thank you for the gold donation. Oh, the little chicken baby is the only thing that is left alive in this side of the jungle. Yeah, and but look at this. Sidon is not wasting any time trying to go into the lower side of the jungle. He's going to top lane yet again, executing something we've been talking about. The heavy pressure on the top lane. Mangstead is getting caught here and obviously dying for the second time already not having the best beginning of the game oh another coming ace getting another kill for the action at this point 101 so it was a kill for the for the trundle back on the previous one now gets yes. a kill for his own Okay, yes, yes, the pickaxe, and was like, no, are you, are you going with the hull breaker with the action? I, I know you can duel, but <laughs> don't do that now. He's going for the for the quiver, so looking for the mythic to get more movement speed, just to get more damage. I thought I was going for the kraken because the passive of dirty fighting alongside with the kraken deals so much damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Just so much additional damage and some attack speed for yourself as well. The Oh, the super mega death rocket just flies by and not really catching anybody while well, Gaffe actually is not wasting any time and taking some trade plates yeah he's a little bit behind in terms of uh, of the cs and in terms of just the kills on the bot lane in general but he's really trying to make it up in terms of the gold that he's getting from the laning phase as well 
The game slows down a bit. In terms of yeah. vision, I do see Flong trying to get a hold of it. On the other side, Domino are letting it slide. They don't feel the necessity to get the vision. There's no objective inbound for them. They already got Sidon with the with the Herald, which means he's looking for a place to put it. And if you look at the bot side, it's the best weapon combo if you want to have a fight and stack up uh, the crescendo when you got mm -hmm. the, the Severum. So it's more than enough. I think Trundle wants to approach the bot side, get the Herald. There's no Dragon, though, to fight for it. So this is going to leave a little bit of time for Flong to make some sort of resistance play. And this is why Herald and Shafti are rotating to the bot side as fast as, ca as they can. But Kala goes way too deep and loses the life in process, which means these are going to be a lot of plates being brought down, if not the entire turret. Yeah, he's stepping a little bit here and actually exactly costing the turret here, maybe even costing the second boink for the Herald, who is exactly being propped right now on the bot lane to go heavy on this turret. A very tricky position for the bot lane here. Maybe it's a good idea to... Okay, not even retreat, trying to stop it and not giving it any opportunity to go for the second point for any further on the lane. Okay, the escalation of, of whatever was happening <laughs> on the bot lane here is that turret still stands, though Kreese is really looking for a possibility to do something about it. There is still one turret plate available there that you could potentially get for yourself, but Ripto in the meantime also not wasting any time and getting quite some gold in his pockets. He is just in a such heavy advantage already on the top lane versus Rungstead. It's... Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, look at the gold. It is quite dramatic difference between the top laners. It is supposed to, in the end. It is supposed to be a really good early game from Domino, and then Flung coming back into the late game mm -hmm. with hyper carries, like getting the Fiata with the challenge, getting Shafty with the resets alongside with Adult, which is like the Azir. You know when the Azir gets to the late game, he does stuff alongside yes. with the Jinx. But if you're getting so many plates to begin the game with, it's more about dealing with the advantage that you have as Dominos than actually coming in with Flung and coming back into the game. So let's see how they can hold the game. It's going to be the Gale Force already procced in for the action. So not even looking for the Kraken. He's looking for the extra mobility, looking for the additional kills. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have an action. You can kill everybody and then all of a sudden you can revive people. So you need more mobility so you're not the first being focused. Yeah, definitely. I think we first discussed when we started touching the mythic item on auction, you mentioned to the mobility. So yeah, definitely that is what he's going for and what Domino are going for is the second dragon. No, the first dragon for themselves. It was first one for the flung. But yeah, the, the problem for... Oh, Whoa! wait a second, what is that? Denton doesn't even care. Moonlight Vigil oh. goes wide because Goof is capable of getting that flash. Roots him away. Oh, beautiful oh. mobility from Chris. A prediction for the devs. Oh, Chris, don't go that wide. The turret is going to connect. He's still alive nonetheless. Ah, uh, death sentence was not a sentence. This was just a prediction. And I think Chris doesn't want that. An additional kill. More planning as well. Domino are just... Well, this is the domino effect versus Flung. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, but also <laughs> Chris with the amazing footwork there in the bot lane, just absolutely loving it. Yeah, you're missing the ultimate, but then you're escaping so much at the same time and just continuing to leave and dealing damage. That is going to be a very hard force to deal with as we go later in the game. And that is the problem that I see here. Yeah, currently you can, as, uh, as the Flung, wait for quite some time, allow your teammates to scale up as much as possible to farm them their way back into the game to get the items and to allow for Viego, for Viewer, for Jinx to shine later and as you actually do, as you mentioned before, because they will be strong. But the problem with going into the late game and putting all your stakes on it is that you cannot give a lot of advantage to the enemy in the early game because they can capitalize on that and jump so far ahead of you that you will not be able to get close with them anymore. And it looks like Domino are going exactly in this direction currently. I like the adaptation from Vangsted, because he went for the whole breaker. He knows he cannot uh -huh. win this line, and he needs to stop this massive influence that Rift is taking on his line. There's no more turret plating, so this means that Action won't be able to get access to more gold unless he takes the entire turret. And now with the hull breaker, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But I think everybody's going to rotate to the top side because the adult will approach now the respawn of the adult, which means it's going to be another objective fight. And without the dragon, you need to fight for that one. Mm -hmm. 
Exactly, because it will allow you to have even more advantage somewhere in the map, potentially pushing forward the top lane and making Fiora's life, even with the whole breaker, a little bit harder. Or just trying to push forward through the mid lane, allowing yourself, opening yourself the possibility for further drakes and just easing your time around the map. Titan not exactly going in, but just scaring everybody a little bit with the turret here. But yeah, the timing is almost up for the Herald, and Domino are in a very good advantage here in terms of already having the terrain for themselves and having the Avi advantage on the top lane, with Rift potentially looking for some Fiziak. Oh my god, yes, he Ignite does. instantly put in. Where's the repulse? There we go. He's going to try and stop that damage, but it's not enough if he flashes in. And the dirty fighting for Ripped is going to get him yet another one. Second kill of the game. There's no hole breaker that is going to protect you off this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the adult being spawned right now, so it's an easy adult for Sidon. He, was, he needed to be aware of that. That is a big objective that we were talking about. So it's going to be turret. It's going to be the adult as well. And Domino are actually dominating this game. There's no answer from Flung. Yeah, I am actually surprised with the lack of answer here. Shaolin actually be, being in a trouble here. Look at that. So the he has Moonstone. He's not going to die. Yeah. Oh, ow. He, he's going with the Moonstone in the end. Yeah, full yeah, second this. Full for the team. Oh, my God. <laughs> This is not going to happen, Shafty. You're so oh, the flash at the end. Okay, I will bite my own <laughs> words. You all played not only me, but Shaolin at the end. Finally getting the kill, but he wasted so much to get that kill nonetheless. Mm -hmm. But the turret is going to be brought down. So this is good for Flunk. They get some sort of objective. Meanwhile, Vanks is pushing on the top side. He has access to a siege minion. So he's going to help him on that push as well. This, oh, it's not even a Siege Minion. The Siege Minion wave is going after with this one. So there's not going to be a turret. They got a turret nonetheless. This is something. Is it? No, it's not the first turret in the game. Though, no, they but got still, the first yeah. turret for them, yeah. Yeah, it's at least something. And maybe it's a good idea to try to put more attention to the bot side of the map, trying to push out there, trying to just focus your attention there and just leave Bunks to his own devices on the top lane. Maybe if you give up on him and pretend that he doesn't exist, maybe if you close your eyes and then don't look in this direction and do something about the bot lane, maybe it is the ticket for you to get out of this tricky situation. So it is an interesting idea because, you again, you have the dragon and you might want to fight for the terrain around it, but at the same time, Domino are still in the lead and they're still using quite a lot of tools on you, including that Boink of the Herald on the mid turret, though it still stands with a third of HP? What is it? Yeah, 20 to 30%. Yeah. I thought about them putting up the... Yeah, this is 30. This is 30, yeah. Uh -huh. I thought about them putting the Herald when the Dragon was about to spawn a little bit afterwards, so they could get some sort of control, but apparently mm -hmm. Flung doesn't even want to fight this one. Uh, I talk with Dusty Viking uh, a lot about this as a jungler, and he usually tells me, okay, what you need to do is you need to realize when you can fight, if this fight is going to bring you anything. Mm -hmm. You have actually the goal to fight. No, they don't have it. So why force a fight, lose the fight, and then lose the dragon as well? Give away that objective. Oh! You... Too fast. Uh-huh. Exactly. Trying to pull there something to do with his action, but not exactly happening. And this turret on the mid lane is not happening anymore as well. It's going down and Flung are in a very tricky position yet again, but now it's even worse than before because yet again, there is still quite a gap between that and Domino. And Domino managed to get on top of the gold difference over and over again. So there is less and less time for Flung to get back on track to scale up. Because there is a possibility for Domino to just try and finish the game pre-30. Pre maybe even 25 if they're quick enough. But I'm not sure about my own words here, to be honest. But just not allowing Flung to have the time to go back on track. Just taking down the objectives, taking down the lanes, and stomping on that. And Domino are, ro are working wonders at this point. Every single time that Flung show themselves on a the lane, that immediately, okay, we have everybody scattered around the map, but we are scattered and close to an objective that we can do if they mm -hmm. reveal themselves in a position where they're not capable of taking anything. The last time they showed themselves, they wanted to kill Ripped, instantly rotation to the mid lane, take the mid turret, get some vision deep inside of the jungle, because if we, if we take a look into the vision of Domino, on the bot side, it's their own vision. If we press F1 right now, you'll see the vision that Domino is building, 
There you go. Ooh. It's light up. Christmas tree on the bot side. <laughs> they got the, the, the turret. Immediately, they get every vision of the bot side, and they can play for the top side if they want. So this is like Domino saying, we don't want those team fights. We want to use this advantage, and we want to catch people out of guard. And this is exactly what is going to happen. <gasps> Vanst is alone. The grand challenge begins. He's going to try and parry something, but he's not capable of doing so. There we go. Another ultimate being used by Akshan. He has the hole breaker, so he's kind of tanky, trying to buy enough time. But tell me, oh, did he all play everybody? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. It's going to be caught in the end. But the thing is, now Domino is actually losing themselves on the yes. same trap they've been setting up. Mid lane is falling for Plong. Yes, they overextended so heavily here. Like, they overplayed this card of yes, we're the strongest ones, and we can take down this spear easily. But her running around so nicely allowed Flop the time to do something around the map at the same time. And the fact that he didn't die in the end also tells quite a lot because you come out of this weird situation as full winners. One more turret, some more gold in your pockets. Yeah, you're still going 6-1, but you actually have the chances to do something about the game if you continue like that. You just need to step up a little bit in more of a macro play throughout the map but the possibilities are definitely there it's the fastest karma uh, uh not karma it's the fastest Fiora. casters yes. curse i've ever seen in my life i was talking about domino mm. macro play like oh they're always punishing the enemy every single time they see anybody alone they go for another objective and all of a sudden it's flung doing the opposite like ah come on <laughs> come on yeah you did it so good till, so far and this is good from flung rotating the the advantage they were building up because if you have a 6-1, if you have turrets as well, and if you look into the gold and only 1,000 ahead, something's wrong. Exactly. Something is not exactly clicking for Dominion anymore. And uh, both teams need to be careful about approaching the next objectives because the Dominion are sitting on a potential soul point for them for the next dragon. And we're talking about the Infernal Soul in this game, so it's a rather big one that you might want to pay attention to and what are slowly getting to the point where they will be able to withstand the fights at the dragon pit and at the same time they can just put Fungstead on the other side of the map not having him in the team fights whatsoever but just letting him split push at the same time as crazy there's something that i was looking into and now i finally realize because this is a support support karma moonstone mm -hmm. Getting, uh, probably going for the putrefied as well. So this means, in terms of magical damage, the only source is the Karma, which is yes. not built AP, and Nautilus. Okay, obviously Nautilus does a lot of ability power. You guys know. You guys have suffered like me. 100 to 0 instantly. Oh, ripped. Oh, this could be a kill on the top side. This could be it. There's an Ignite on cooldown. Ripped is going to be punished by that. If you stop the E, you can do it. If you stop the Heroic Swing, you can do it. But I was looking like there's no ability power damage outside of mm -hmm. Nautilus and Karma and no one is building AP, obviously, which means it's only physical damage. You have the steel caps on both Vangstead and Shafti. You can build a lot of armor as well to complement this. So you can protect yourself into the late game. You cannot protect yourself from Azir, from Viego, from True Damage, from Gufe as well. So late game wise, Flung have the lead if they're able to stall this one. Fully agreed. I mean... Going second support for solo lane for the team has its advantages, but it means that you need really invest heavily into someone who is going to hype or carry the team on its shoulders because you're basically sacrificing another damage dealer. So it means you need to funnel a lot into the other one. And in this, in this specific situation, yeah, it makes the building up for Flung so much easier because they just have one specific type of damage they need to build against. And they're going for it. They realize it pretty early. They're going all in for it. And that karma mid lane as a second support is not exactly going to be helpful as we go deeper into the game. Yes, still allow still providing the sustain, still providing the shields and some sort of control. But you will need the damage in the next team fights because there is going to be a lot of damage coming from the other side. But you will not have enough probably to answer it. There's someone building some sort of randuins or something like that. It's going to be so good. And mm. gold-wise, it's going to be worth for Flung if they're capable of protecting themselves versus that full AD team. On the other side, though, Errol coming in with the Shadow Flame, Blood and Zeko as well. 
uh, sorcerer's shoes, so that's a lot of penetration in terms of magic. There's no one that is going to build magic resistance. This is a game for Azir to shine on the late game. Yes, especially with the Ludens Echo available for him. He is just going to go in, do a little boom, and then the immediate <laughs> damage coming in just the very second. It's going to be a lot, and it's going to be really hard to do anything against it because there are quite squishy champions on the side of Domino, and with all the, even with all the support and assistance from Karma, they might not just not be able to stand against it. I was not expecting this. This is a Mana Mune from Bungstead. Fiora building the Mana Mune. Oh. I thought it was going more tanky, but no, he wants that uh, more more damage. Okay, the idea is, if you're capable of finishing that item, the procs you're gonna get it, they're going to be heavily valuable and really fast as well. You can proc that item five to six times in like two seconds, so the damage is going to be unreal, but you're mm -hmm. still squishy at the end of the day. You are, but if you manage to if you manage to come up come into the enemy with all your team together with you, they will not have any possibility to get to you and to shut you down. So you sacrificing some sustainability is actually going to work out in this case nicely. And currently he's building himself up for the possibility to use this later in the team fights because he's avoiding the fights as much as possible. He's just standing on the sidelines. Running away from anybody from the enemy team he sees. Not that much anymore, but it's a slightly different situation here. Mm -hmm. A lot of teammates at your side, you might not want to run anymore. But still, he's avoiding the fight, just farming, split pushing, farming actually pretty nicely considering how bad of a beginning he had and waiting. It is currently a waiting game for him and for the whole team, honestly. We're talking about waiting games. Is this gonna happen again? Where the top lane that is heavily punished in the beginning of the game, and then the other one is like, okay, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna wait, and when I get to the late game, I'm gonna carry. It, is every single top lane that, like, uh, early top lane that are going to be defeated today because the other top lane is just holding it on? It would be interesting to see. There definitely would be some, um, some pattern going on here, and I'm not sure if it's a good pattern or not, but definitely, yeah. You sacrifice the early game, you sacrifice your mental stability maybe a little bit too, because you <laughs> suffer quite a lot in the beginning. But you know that it's going to be worth it in the end, because you'll come out of this situation shining. And the Hellbreaker actually plays quite a big role in it, I'm afraid. Is it that? No, it's only the second time we've seen the Hellbreaker. No, this is the fourth game, which means this is the third time, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I'm kind of lost. I thought it was, this was the third one. Okay, we only have one additional game outside of this. Oh, I wanted Aww. more. But okay. Yeah. Uh, Hullbreaker, shining again. This is such a good item, especially if you're falling behind. It's really cheap for the stats that it gives you, and you're capable of bringing so much into the matchup. Even if you gather with the team later on in the game, it still allowed you to farm what you needed to get a little bit back on track, and the stats are still really good. Ever since the other ones the other items like the Gore Drinker, the Statics Gauge, were uh, a little bit tweaked. Let's mm -hmm. call it this way. Uh, Hellbreaker is way too cheap for what it does. It also helps you a lot if you're falling behind. And this is exactly what happened with the Fiora. She was falling behind uh, heavily. Ripped did a really good job at the beginning of the game, but just as expected from uh, an action on the top. But still, yeah, they have the early game versus the late game. We know if, uh, if Long are capable of uh, just slowing this down into the late game, They'll probably win it, but you still have to take into account this is an action. So even yeah. if there's like a triple kill and if he kills that guy, the entire team is back on, on business. Yeah, and that is that is the very tricky situation here that I see. Honestly, action can be the table turner of any team fight that we see. Because yeah, later on, there will be a lot of damage from suddenly scaled up champions. But then again, the action can come in and just save the day. So nothing is yet decided in the game. We're still kind of in the waiting zone, to be honest, uh, for Flong, but I feel like they will be getting out of it very soon. And for Dominion, that is a very important point because they kind of already are past the opportunity to just finish the game very quickly, make it sound of a 20-minute match. We go in, we take the game, we get out of it before anybody has any chance to scale into anything. Right now, they need to decide how do they want to try to stomp this game further? And are they going to be able to do it? This is the slowest game of all the games we had today, but yeah. for a reason. Because when it's going to explode, 
it will probably be like the last fight. As soon as we got a massive one, probably for the soul or something like that, it's going to be over 5-10 minutes top afterwards. I'll give it like 5 once we get it like a big, big team fight. Because mm -hmm. everybody will heavily commit. And I'm going to say it again, Azir, in my opinion, has a big role on this game. So a big shooting shuffle could make it. And uh, the damage is going to the shout is going to be absurd as well. Because nobody is mm -hmm. building magic resist on Domino side. Everybody's focusing, oh, they have a Jinx, they have a Fiora. Yeah, 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 we, we, we should protect ourselves versus that. And then you have the Azir damage, and all of a sudden, like, yeah. oh, no, that was a lot. Uh, that can be the fatal mistake, actually, for the Mina, not taking into consideration that Azir, who has been farming all this time pretty nicely, has been building against himself up. Now, with this Luden, the moment he comes in, somebody dies on the enemy team. We're back in business, everybody, yes. as we get the third Infernal Dragon for Domino, which means in one and a half minute, it could be the soul we were talking about. So we were just setting up for you guys. And even though if you look into the kills, there's only one kill for Shafty. They're still tied up, kind of, in terms of gold. 43,800 versus 43,200. What is the big difference? You get it on the top side and you think, oh, wait. He's back in business as well. Look at the gold difference. It's not that big. It's only 500 apart. Only in the jungle is Shafty running away with the lead. In the mid lane, it's more than 1,000 as well just by farming. The only one who's just sitting on the top of the throne in terms of gold, it is Chris. We're watching him right now with the Aphelios. He's sitting at 290 farm alongside with two kills, a lot of platings. He has three items right now, and he joined the fight. To see who's going to take control of this soul. Well, still have a little bit of time available, but not much because Ooh. the Minos are really looking for clearing this mid lane and clearing the terrain for them for, to prepare for that fight. And they want to be the first ones to enter the lands where they want to fight because they want to dictate where. Oh my God, where, this is where the fight is going Hunk's to happen. Hunk's got what doesn't matter. Frog the W and get away. Ooh. Perry. Yeah, you bury all the damage that comes into you, just, just like that. But, 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 so what do we have? The Minar here, they're the first one. Reef just trying to maybe try to outflank the enemies when they will do to stop the soul. The dragon is up already. But there's a teleport by Vungst. He went straight up into the baron, but Chris is way too farmed up to wait so long on the Infernal. They got the Infernal Soul. The damage is ludicrous. They have the poke as well. They're trying to commit to the battle, but this is the team fight we were talking about. Chris is on the back line. Moonlight Vigil is stacking up all those crescendos. It is time to shine, baby. Let's see what's gonna happen for this Aphelius. He's going to use the Gale Force. They knock Bugs into the middle of the team fight. And all of a sudden it is ripped. It is Chris and only at all alongside with the Jinx, lonely with no HP, looking at the pattern being taken down. Looking at the possibility of winning the game immediately being taken away from them. Maybe he will try to do something. Maybe he will try to steal this Baron. No, no. He will try, but he will not succeed in it. And here we have the team fight, an absolutely beautiful one. Chris was amazing the way he was positioning himself in that fight, making sure that he's staying safe all the time. Because again, we're talking about two duelists on the side of Long, but they were not able to get to him. And even though Vangstad actually had a chance, he was not capable to just deal the damage already because he was just taken down. He didn't have any health left at this moment, I think. This is the perfect combination of weapons for a, a failure when you want to have a team fight. You can stack those chakrams in less than two and a half seconds. And he had a lot. Shafty blocking this blast gun, sending Vangst into his own death. As you see, coming up, uh, coming ace from action, just taking another kill. This was perfect for Domino. Really well executed as well. And they gave up the soul to die at the end. And I guess they're going to die again as Jinx is oh. going to get caught. Brought down into the ground for the double kill again from Chris. Just shining today. Shafty as well. Just going in the map. Boo, 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 boo. Rip with another one. He's on the rampage. And it's Errol alone. Vax trying to defend the base. I don't think the Manamian is going to help him right now. Because he has to gather with adults. And they have to do anything they can to stop this. The team at the top. Another fish. Denden is just fishing them up. Hick. Who can sink? 
bringing all the fishes to the team so they can feed themselves up and take another victory. This is so good for Domino, five and five at week five, day 10. And that crease going 7-0 in the end, not dying a single time in this game. Absolutely incredible. The man knew where he had to be in the fight. And the man was sticking to his position and just, just going by the book in every fight that we saw. It was a time trial. They knew the timestamp. Okay, we got to get it before the late game. We got to get it before the Azir is capable of getting all those items. Fiora capable of getting the split push. She went for the stacking item and immune, which means she's not as tanky or bursty as she wants to be, which means later on on the stage, so were they adding more time? And Domino were like, okay, play for the Aphelios, get him up, get all the money on the Aphelios. He was 2,500 gold ahead of the Jinx at one point. That's mm -hmm. like an entire item, almost an yeah. entire item added to the Aphelios. And they only fought when they knew the weapons were perfect for them as well. So perfect execution from Domino. The only time they didn't do the perfect execution was when I was telling that they were doing the perfect execution. Oh, yes, exactly. Yeah, that was the only time they were like, you know what, Tarsha? We're not going to do it. We're going uh -huh. to show you that you're not good. And they showed me, and they did an awesome game, and now they're 5-5. Five and five. It's really important for them to stay above the middle of the standing so if they get a shot at the playoffs. Yeah, but in general, that was such a beautiful game for them. You could see the idea for Flung. You could see them trying to stick with it, but you could also realize that Domino understood they read this strategy very nicely and they were specifically going against it from very early on and they just executed it so perfectly that there was basically no chance to, for Flong to come back. The moment that Soul was lost, everything was lost for them. It's more than enough when you get the Infernal, you get three Infernal Dragons as well. That's yeah. a, a big percentage as well for the entire team. And Domino taking another victory at this point, 5-5, five and five, just as I told you, which means we have another game. The last game of the day is going to be AAB Esports versus Lucent Esports. So it's going to be a good one. Stick around. I'll see you soon on Division 2 of the NLC.